Good day, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Fayette Focus. Harry Wright with you today, my guest from the Miami Tree School District. We've got the man himself, David Lewis. How are you? I'm doing well, Harry. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So uh, everything's finished up. I think they had the last event in the Panther Pit. It was a volleyball game where Miami Trace didn't come out too well on that. I believe uh, straight sets or straight games. But I wanted to tell you how impressed I was with the athletic ability of the young ladies on the volleyball team for Trace and courthouse both. I mean, sure, uh, sure. I've played a little volleyball in my life, but I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see you try to block a couple uh, shots over the net. Maybe uh, next time we can get you out and and uh, display that for us. But no, our we've had a great fall season in all of our sports, and our kids work hard, and uh, you know, it, it's always a joy to go out and watch them compete. I know you're very a fairly successful uh, football. Maybe the the wins and losses aren't the way they want, but you've got numbers. There's progress, and things are going to be building in the future for that. Yeah, uh, when we hired Coach Williams, you know, we knew that we were going to be in somewhat of a rebuilding phase. Um, you know, we've got a good program going at the youth levels now. Uh, we've got good numbers at the middle school, so you know we're well aware that you know maybe our better best days are ahead of us. Um, but our kids are competing hard, and uh, you know they're working hard, and we want to see a, a strong finish to the season. So with the underclassmen that you have coming up, Bryce Matson at the WCHO and I were talking the other day about you know. Uh, you're only a couple years away from that football team because you got numbers now. Yeah, we're young. Uh, we're very young this year. We start quite a few sophomores, and I think we even play some freshmen, uh, which is kind of unheard of at the varsity level. And you just want to see them compete and go out there and get better each and every week. And, uh, you know, we've had some tough games here lately, and, uh, you know, we want to see them finish strong and, and keep a positive attitude. And, you know, all of our fall, fall sports, you know, we're proud of all of our kids, whether they win or lose. So That's right, and, and that's what I like about Miami Trace. It's that Panther pride. you got to love it. Um, but, no, the football team's been doing really well considering they've only got four seniors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, like I said, they're young, and, you know, as long as they keep uh, keep improving week after week. And, you know, I know our, our high school coaches are involved at the lower levels, and they go watch the younger kids and uh, the youth football program. I know that they're in a new league this year um, that they're very competitive in. So, you know, hopefully there are bright days ahead for uh, Panther football. So the last event in the Panther pit. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, you know, we did have our last fall event, uh, volleyball in the old gym. Um, you know, last year, last winter, we had our this is it for the pit. Uh, for the basketball games, but we're probably going to be playing a few basketball games in there prior to the new school opening. Um, the project is on schedule. We will move in on time January 2nd, uh, unless there's some unforeseen challenges, but we're probably not going to get control of the building as quickly as we wanted, so we may have to play a few games uh, in the old high school gym just to make sure that everything is finished and completed um, on time and we know how to operate everything. So it's really going to be a week-to-week -week process for us. Now I'm thinking about, okay, you got the old school here in operation right now, and then the new school's not too far away, but here's what I'm thinking. All the books in the library got to be moved, and all the tables and chairs got to be moved. You're going to do that all over Christmas? Yeah, we will actually do the physical move, I think, starting December 17th, the week of December 17th. But even prior to that, you know, as long as we get control of the building and the life safety, um, life safety goes well, um, we'll probably start moving some bigger items for uh, VOAG, for our FFA program, things of that nature. Um, but the actual physical move, we have a moving company coming the week of the 17th. So teachers will be boxing up things. Uh, thing is, there's not a lot to move. You don't take furniture. Um, there aren't a lot of books anymore. Um, you know, all of our curriculum is online, so students have their laptops. But really, there's not a lot to move other than classroom instructional uh, materials and uh, supplies in your office, you know, records, files, things like that. So there's not a great deal to move, as you would think. Well, you know, I, I was wondering about the desk and the chairs and stuff, but you don't have to move that. That's all going to stay in your building. Nope. We uh, we get all new furniture in the building, so we will have an auction sometime in the middle of January uh, where, you know, we'll, we'll share more information with people uh, as we get closer to that. But uh, the middle of January, community members will be able to come in and, and uh, participate in an auction. So that will, be, uh, that will be fun for people to come through, and if they want to get some mementos from the building uh, before it is demolished, uh, you know, it will probably be, will be demolished. You know, by early March after they do the asbestos abatement and everything. So, now will you be having a brand new gym floor as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So what I'm thinking is you should sell blocks of the old gym floor to the alumni. 
people people will come in and somebody will want to buy the gym floor. I think we are going to cut out a couple places like where it says Miami Trace and Panthers and maybe frame that and put it in our athletic hallway. Uh, we thought that would be one way to kind of look back on the history of Miami Trace and would be neat for our student athletes to see that every day. You could sell that gym floor off in blocks and let people come in and get their piece of wood from that floor, and that money could go to your athletic department. You'd be inter- You'd be surprised. Not interested. You'd be surprised. Somebody may want to come in and buy the whole thing. Um, you know, I've seen that in the past, and and so it's always interesting to see what people, uh, what's important to people when they come in and what they want to be a part of. We are having a. Uh, our last home football game, which I think is October 17th against Hillsboro, we're going to have an open house in the old high school for folks that want to come uh, starting at 5 o'clock if they want to walk through the old high school, um, you know, and kind of share memories with their family and, and uh, just kind of walk around and relive the old days of Miami Trace High School. We're going to give folks the opportunity to do that on the 17th. Uh, a rare event is also going to happen on the 17th where we have both of our radio station and our sister station down Hillsboro, WSRW, will be there covering the Hillsboro Indians. Okay. And Bryce and uh, Steve will be there covering the game for uh, 105.5, Buckeye Country 105.5. So, It'll be a fun uh, night. The only the second time in history. Last week was the first time in history that happened at Courthouse. Yeah. This is only the second time in history that's going to happen, oh, so me, it's going to be great. Me. That's a good. That's a good opportunity. Should be a fun night. And, uh, it, sh- it should be a great night. And and the, the last home event there. Now that field is going to remain just new grandstand. Yeah, we have a new turf field this uh, this fall. Um, we're putting in a new concession restroom building. If, if people come by the stadium and they see construction out in front of the stadium, that's what we're building there: concessions, restrooms, uh, ticket. Uh, but as soon as the building is, is demolished, then we will put up new bleachers uh, for the stadium. So the field is staying put. Uh, we'll put in new bleachers. Uh, it will move closer to the field, and so Panther Alley will go away, um, and, and people will be closer to the field to, to see our events. Sounds like everything's moving right along. Uh, academically, how are we doing? Well, we're doing great. You know, we were just uh, kids are working hard, and it's an exciting it's an exciting time. You know, I talked to some high school kids last week, and, you know, they, they think it's neat that – you know, they get to start the year in the old school, and then they get to finish the, the, the school year in the new school. So, uh, you know, kids are working hard. I think everybody's anxious to get into the new building, and we, we are on time. We will move in January 2nd. Um, it's a little tighter than we really anticipated at the beginning, but with construction, you know, that, that's the way it is. Um, we are going to have our open house and uh, ribbon-cutting ceremony on December 30th. Uh, more information will come out about that. Uh, probably 2 o'clock we will have the ribbon-cutting ceremony and then have an open house for the community 3 to 5 where folks can, can walk through the building and kind of see our new spaces. And then we'll start with students on January 2nd. So it's going to be a very busy couple months for us. It sounds like it, but it also sounds like it's very exciting. Now, I know the I know the excitement that was generated back in 1979 mm-hmm. when Madison Plains built their new high school, and how exciting it was to be in a brand new space. And mm-hmm. you know, it does it does generate a lot of excitement, not just among the students, but the teachers as well. Well, sure. You know, I think our teachers. It, it's really you know here it is October. You know, it's kind of upon us, and you know this has been a long process for two or three years, and. You know, we've kind of seen the construction taking place over there, but but now it's it's getting real for many people. Um, our teachers are anxious to get into the building. We're trying to wait until um, we're at a certain point in construction and, and furniture has moved in. Uh, so early November, we're hoping to take our staff over. Um, I've taken some groups of students in the past. I hope to do that as well. Um, but, you know, prior to, prior to leaving for Christmas break, we have to do orientation for all of our staff and students. So once the building's turned over to us, which, which should happen around Thanksgiving time, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of systems that need to be tested um, and getting staff and students oriented to the building, making sure all the technology is working properly. There's a lot of work that has to take place before then. So Now, the entrance is going to be off of Eber Road instead of 41, right? It's going to be off Bloomingburg, New Holland Road. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but our campus will be connected. Uh, the whole campus, you'll be able to come in off 41. Um, if you have a student at the elementary school, you drop them off. You can come around, pass our middle school, go past the high school, and, and exit out on Bloomingburg, New Holland. So it's going to be kind of a the Eber bypass is what we're calling it. There you go. There you go. Uh, Bloomingburg, New Holland Road, I notice in the afternoons when the buses are pulling out of Miami Trace, that 41 is is very congested and it, people 
uh, high traffic. You, gotta, you have a, a sheriff's deputy that sits down with his lights on to remind people, hey, we got buses yeah. coming up. Be a little safer coming off Bloomy Bird. Yeah, it, it's, uh, th- there's a lot of traffic after school. Um, I think it will help, you know, with some people being able to leave on Bloomy Bird, New Holland Road. Um, our transportation department and administrative team has kind of, you know, stepped back and, and, and looked and see how we want traffic flow to work. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a process. And, and like we tell people, we need to be flexible. Um, when we move into the building in January, it's going to be a, a large learning curve. We're going to get to the end of the year. And then if there are things that aren't working well, we can adjust. You know, it, it's it's exciting time to move into a new school. But, you know, there are going to be some challenges ahead, too. And we're just asking everyone to be flexible and we'll we'll work through it together. During the building process of this new school, there's obviously something that's, that you ha- has have happened that you didn't think about. What was it? It's got to be something. Hmm. I mean, I, you He's got the, me on the spot. Here. I know. Well, you know, and, and he didn't get tested by this. Yeah, this I is know. putting on the spot. I know that the, the architect drew everything up, and then you get out there, and and it's like, oh wow, that's yeah. not gonna work. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of things. I mean, think about if you're building a house. You know, this is a hundred and sixty thousand square feet facility, square foot facility. So there there are surprises. There are things that you know come to our attention that we have to kind of revisit. Probably too many to name, um, but you know it's a hundred and sixty thousand forty four million dollar project. So you know there are a lot of things, but we work through. We've worked through. We have a great team, uh, architects, our construction management team. You know we've really had a good good project and, and worked well together. All right. Well, that sounds like everything's going smooth, and we appreciate you taking time out of your very busy day. Dave Lewis, Superintendent of Schools, Mommy Trace. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. Thank you, Harry.